Okay, hello. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Hello. Give me, give me a second because I'm having. I think I don't know if I can hear you with this one. Okay. Um. Ahora sí ya pueden escucharme. ¿Te escucha bien? Yes, teacher. Okay. So I don't know if. Okay. Um, give me a moment because I'm having trouble with the sound. Okay, I think now it's it's better. Now you can hear me. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you. I was having trouble with the the um, the sound because I don't know what is happening with my computer. But um, I think I can fix it with with this one. So okay. Um. Now it's time to begin a new course. So we are going to start with the youth uh, course today because, you know, because of the um, the situation, uh, we are going to start right now the um, the course. I think that um, it will be very, very interesting because we have a lot of interesting topics that we are going to develop in this course. But the first thing I want to do is to, uh, Say something about me because today we are going to meet each other uh, in this course. So the first thing is I want to um, say that my name is uh, Elena Chavarria and I am in charge of this uh, course this whole month uh, in which we are going to uh, learn a lot of things. We are going to um, uh, remember uh, information that we have about the English process and some things that maybe you have learned in the past. But now we are going to construct new information about this language. So it's a pleasure for me to be here with you in this hour that we are going to share um, four days a week. So I think that uh, it will be very, very interesting at this course because you are like, um, you have like a lot of information uh, at this point. So we are going to start this uh, session uh, talking about the first topic that you are going to develop in this, um, in this moment. So again, it's a pleasure to me with uh, being here working with you. And if you need some help, you have some question, you need something uh, about a uh, big course, you can tell me and I will help you with uh, the work in the platform because you know that um, one of the most important things that we need to do is to work in the platform to um, let them know that you are like um, understanding all the topics that you are going to develop in this course. 
So again, my name is Elena Chavarria and I am in charge of this course and it's a pleasure to be here working with you. So the first thing that we are going to uh, do right now is to uh, know what is the first topic that we are going to develop today in this course. So I'm not going to share the screen because I have a document that I want to share with you right now. And in this moment, uh, I will uh, show you this uh, document. And I want to say something about this. Um, I like to work with this kind of document um, with all the courses. This is a Google, uh, Google Doc in which you're going to find all the information that we are going to develop in the whole course. Um, the thing is that I will send to you the link in which you can access to this document um, and you will find all the information about the, the, the courses or the topics that we are going to develop uh, through this month. So in this case, you're not going to have like um, a Word document in which you, um, you will find all the information. You will have just I'm sorry, it is supposed that I am not having troubles with the connection, but um I don't know. It's something that happened. But we are going to continue. So I was saying that um I will send this link. Um, and you are going to have just one document in which you are going to find all the things that we are going to develop in this course. So it is not necessary that you download something uh, and you keep in your cell phones or in your devices because you are going to have the access for the whole information in one link. So, um, this Friday, I will send you the link because we are going to complete four sessions. So at the, uh, the end of the week, I will send the link in which you are going to find the information that we are going to develop today and the other three days, um, the exercises and all of that thing. So uh, if some of the participants cannot access to the sessions, one of these days, it is not a big problem because we know that something is happening right now and and maybe some of, of you will have some trouble. And in this case, you will have all the information in that place. So you can keep uh, studying the information, you can keep reading the information and uh, solving your exercises. So we are going to begin with uh, this part and we have like a phrase in uh, the image so it says nothing is impossible the word itself says i am possible so if you are thinking that something is impossible for you you need to change that word and think that is uh, the word itself says i am possible so you need to find uh, the solution but first you need to think you need to um, stop for a moment and look for the new uh, way to do that situation. And you can change it for you. So if you are having some trouble with something, you need to find another way to do it because nothing is impossible if we want to do something new. So now we are going to begin with the topic number one, that is adverbs. We are uh, going to talk about adverbs. Um, maybe you have a lot of information about adverbs, but in this case, we are going to talk about again, this adverb. And also we are going to hear a conversation that we find, or you will find uh, on the platform. But now we are going to listen to that conversation uh, about a city with adverbs before adjectives are used. So in this case, we are going to use adverbs before adjectives and what are the uses for those adverbs 
Uh, but today we are going to um, make the difference between adjectives and adverbs and some uses for those words. So first, we are going to listen a conversation and then we are, we are going to talk about the adverbs. Así que vamos a escuchar una pequeña conversación donde vamos a escuchar cómo utilizan los adverbios y luego vamos a marcar las diferencias entre adverbios y adjetivos. So, we are going to see or hear the conversation. Let me share this one and listen. That's a really nice city. Yeah, it is. Hi, welcome to this new section. We are about to watch and listen to a conversation about a city where adverbs become where adjectives are used. As soon as you listen to it, I want you to play it again and practice the conversation with a friend or a relative. So where are you from, Carmen? I'm from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Wow. I've heard that's a really nice city. Yeah, it is. You can uh, listen at the audio? Yes, I yes, listen. Please. Yes. Okay. Yes. Someone said that that is not uh, working. But let me see. Oh. Okay. 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 I will play it again. Don't worry. From Carmen. I'm from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Wow. I've heard that's a really nice city. Yeah, it is. The weather is great, and there are some fantastic beaches just outside the city. Is it expensive there? No, it's not very expensive. Prices are pretty reasonable. How big is the city? It's a fairly big city, but it's not too big. It sounds perfect to me. Maybe I should plan a trip there sometime. So we have that conversation, and I will show you just the the um the conversation without the sound because we are going to talk about the adverbs and we need to know what uh what are the adverbs and also what are the adjectives and how the adverbs can um like change something with the adjectives so in the document we have first our adjective for today and it says in this session, participants will listen to a conversation about a city where adverbs before adjectives are used. So in this case, we have this conversation that is uh, called, it's a fairly big city. So we have two uh, people talking about uh, the city. Uh, Eric is asking, where is Carmen from? So she's talking about San Juan, Puerto Rico. So in that case, they are like describing that city. They are talking about the things that we can find in that place. So it says, so where are you from, Carmen? I'm from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Wow, I have heard that it's really nice city. It's a really nice city. Yeah, it is. The weather is great. And there are some fantastic beaches just outside the city. It is expensive there? No, it is not very expensive. Prices are pretty reasonable. How big is the city? It's a fairly big city, but it is not too big. It sounds perfect to me. Maybe I should plan a trip there sometime. So when we are using the adjectives, we know that in that case, we are using the adverbs before the adjective. And you know that the adjectives are those words that we use to describe someone uh, or something. So in this case, uh, the name of the conversation is fairly big, un poco grande. In this case, it's not too big 
or to shore. So now we are going to see the difference or the information that we have about the adjectives and about the adverbs. We are going to see what are adverbs, what are adjectives, and how can we use them. And also in this case, because we need to know how to use the adverbs with the adjectives, we are going to see some examples and all of that thing. So the first thing that we are going to see is what are adjectives? And we have here that the adjectives modify nouns and pronouns. And the adverbs modify verbs, adjectives, phrases, and other adverbs. So the difference is that the adjective just modify nouns and pronouns. But in this case, uh, you can use it also for describing uh, some places. But in this case, we're going to say that it modifies nouns and pronouns. And we have the adverb that they modify verbs, adjectives, phrases, and other adverbs. So in this case, you can see that the adverbs modify more than one, and the adjectives it has just two types. But the adverbs modify more than two things. In this case, they modify verbs, they modify adjectives. That is the thing that uh, we are going to learn today. And also, they can uh, modify phrases and other adverbs in the phrase. So. What is the difference between an adjective and an adverb? That is a question that we are going to answer right now. What is the difference? An adjective and an adverb. What is the difference? Well, we have that the adjectives modify the nouns and pronouns, and the adverb modifies more things. But it says that the adjectives and adverbs are descriptive words that we use for different parts of a speech. They are describing, but they are describing different things. So that is the difference between them. They have it's specific things that they, they are describing. So they modify different parts of a speech. You know that in English we have like uh, many big groups of words that are very, very important um, that um, like we have these groups of words that we need to use when we are talking in English. So in this case, we have this part of a speech that they are like the, the bigger group uh, that we use to create the language. So in this case, we are going to see uh, what parts of a speech the adjectives modify and what parts of a speech the adverbs modify. And the first one, it says that adjectives modify nouns and pronouns. That is the thing that we are seeing uh, in the first part. So in this case, we can see that the adjective modify people and places. Si vemos acá, los adjetivos están modificando nombres y pronombres. ¿Qué significa eso? Que el adjetivo está modificando todo aquello donde salga una persona, por ejemplo, porque el pronombre es lo que utilizamos para eh, modificar el uso de los nombres. I, you, he, she, he, we, you, and they. But, eh, 
behind those pronouns, we have people. So in that case, we can use the adjective to modify uh, something or talk about something uh, related to a person. For example, I want to say, she is uh, beautiful, she is smart, she is tall, um, he is handsome, he is um, like, he has brown skin or something like that. So in that case, the adjective is modifying a pronoun. And in the case of pronouns, we are uh, maybe modifying like animals, like places, um, clothes, all of that things, because they are related to the noun. Así que cuando nos referimos a nombres, nos estamos refiriendo a nombres comunes, ¿verdad? Cosas que tengan nombres comunes, como los edificios, la ropa, libros, eh, pinturas, todo ese tipo de cosas van envueltos en los nombres, y los pronombres están envueltos con las personas. Now, the second one of the, um, the adverbs, we know that they modify verbs, that are the actions that someone or something is doing. Also modify the adjectives that are the words that we are using to describe someone or something. Phrases, in this case, we are going to see why we can modify phrases using the adverbs and also other adverbs. In this case, they can modify other adverbs in um, the sentence. So, how to spot an adjective and or uh, spot an adjective from an adverb? It's easy to confuse adjectives and adverbs because they often have similar or identical words. For instance, many adjectives turn into adverbs by adopting ly. Uh, e, L, Y, and other endings. So in this case, when you are going to use an adjective and you um, write the suffix that are the ending of the words, you can transform those adjectives into adverbs. En este caso nos pregunta cómo podemos identificar o diferenciar un adjetivo de un adverbio o de un adverb es más que todo por los finales que tiene. Si nosotros tenemos un adjetivo y le colocamos alguno de esos finales, en muchos de los casos puede convertirse en un adverb. So, it says, many adjectives turn into adverbs adopting and we have here Y, E, Y. We have this one too. Or Y. At the end of the word. But how? How can we do that? So we have some examples to explain this one. We have here the example, but let me take it like this. Okay, we have clear, clear, clear. That one is an adjective because we're talking about some, that something is clear, it's limpio. In that case, we're saying uh, something about uh, on a specific thing. But when we are going to transform this, clear into an adverb, we are going to add these endings. And we are going to say clearly. It's like saying claramente, limpio, claramente. It changed the meaning. And in this case, we have the adjective. Then if we write L, Y, we have an adverb. Next, next one is happy. Happy, and we change to happily. Then we have believable. Uh, 
and we change like this. Then we have basic and we can transform basically. So in this case, when we transform these words, we can have an adverb. And some of them have like something very, very uh, similar. But in this case, we need to focus on the context of the uh, sentence or the situation in which we are using this kind of words. However, some adverbs retain the exact spelling as their adjective from a uh, form, such as hard, fast, or straight. It's kind of complicated because there are some uh, adverbs that have the same uh, spelling as the adjective. Tenemos también algunos ad ad adverbs que mantienen. Um, in this case, we can uh, say the way in they are uh, Created. Mantienen esa forma en la que han sido creadas o escritas, así como los adjetivos. Y tenemos algunos ejemplos como hard, like this. Hard, fast, or straight. So in this case, uh, they keep this, this way and they are kind of complicated to see if they are like adverbs or adjectives. But in the case, um, in this case, we're going to see the context. How are we using this kind of word? In that case, we are, now, um, we are going to know if they are adjectives or if they are adverbs. To understand when these terms function as adjectives or adverbs, we are going to see um, this example. Para saber cuándo son adjetivos y cuándo son adverbios, vamos a, a ver, en este caso, unos ejemplos. Let's see. We have in this case, number one. Let me say this. Okay. We have, the assignment is hard. The assignment is hard. In this case, in this one, I need to write an N. Okay, this one. So I have here hard. But in this case, I am talking about what? I'm talking about this one. I'm going to do it like this. The assignment is hard. In este caso, es como la tarea. Podemos decirle de esa forma. La tarea es difícil. So it's complicated. In that case, we are talking about something. So in that case, I am modifying a noun. So in this case, I, I have an adjective. This one is functioning as an adjective, nor as um, an adverb. But in the second one, the students work hard. This one, this is an adverb. Why? Because we are modifying the verb in this case, the action, they are doing something. The students work hard. They are modifying the action or the verb. En el primero, estamos modificando el nombre. The assignment is hard. El, la tarea o la asignación está difícil. But in the second one, the students work hard. Los estudiantes trabajan fuerte, trabajan duro. So in that case, it's an adverb, not an adjective because they are not modifying the noun. Next one. We have here, I drive a fast car. So in this case, we are talking about an adjective. So in this case, we have here this word, task. 
But in this case, I am modifying what? I'm modifying a noun because I'm talking about the car. In this case, I'm modifying the nombre. I drive a fast car. Estoy manejando un carro rápido. So I'm modifying the noun. And the next one, I was driving fast. I was driving fast. In this case, adverb. Because I'm talking about the action that I was doing in that moment. I was driving. That is my verb, driving. So in that case, I am modifying the verb. So for that reason, I have an adverb. And the last one, this is a long a straight road. This is a long a straight road. And in this case, we have adjective because we are modifying this word, road. This is un camino largo y derecho. We can say it like that. Porque es recto, ¿verdad? No tiene curvas ni nada por el estilo. So in that case, we are modifying the word road. And in the last one, it says, the road leads straight home. The road leads straight home. And in this case, we have the effort. And in this one, we are modifying this word. That is the verb. El camino conduce directamente a casa o recto hasta nuestra casa. So in that case, we are modifying the verb. So in that case, we have the difference between the adjectives that are modifying the noun and the adverbs that are modifying the, um, the action or the verb. In this case, we are just using the verb uh, to explain uh, the difference between adjectives and adverbs. But also you have more words that you can use to create this kind of sentence. So, I know that you have this kind of information we are going to make like, um, we'll just remember some information that we have. So in that case, uh, the first thing, what is an adjective in, 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 in this uh, space? An adjective are descriptive words that modify nouns or pronouns to clarify which, how many, and what kind. When we are talking about adjectives, we can think about these questions and how to answer them. And we have which that we have like, um, maybe a group of things and we need to specify which of these things we are talking about. Uh, how many? In this case, you know that the numbers also function as an adjective. What kind? Uh, uh, it's the other uh, question that we are going to, to answer. Then, using adjectives in sentences, it says the most adjectives appear before the noun or pronoun they modify. And we are going to see some examples just like to remember the information. So it says most adjectives appear before or pronoun they modify. And we have here examples. In this case, we are going to see the um, like the structure or the places in which we are going to write the adjectives in the sentence. And we have the first one. And it says, 
that is a this bug. Here we have the noun. This one is the noun. We are going to have it in yellow. And this one is the adjective. And we're going to have it in this color. Mm, yes. Yeah. So we have the example that is a big bug. So in that case, the adjective is before the noun. It is possible to wear it after. Yes, it is possible. But in this case, we are going to have it before the noun. Then we have, he wants a cute, he wants a cute toy. He wants a cute toy. And then I am a short girl. I am a short girl. So in that case, we're modifying the word girl. Yes, I am talking about me, but in this case, uh, the, um, the specific word that I am modifying is a girl. However, some adjectives appear after linking verbs that express what we feel, perceive, or enjoy. We are going to write uh, this information and the example for the Linking verb. After linking verb that express what we feel, perceive. or enjoy. And we have the example. We are going to see how can we write this example. I feel good. I feel good. We know that in this case, we don't have a day, a subject. In this case, we are talking about feeling something. So I feel in this case, we can say that we have the verb feel, and we are writing good. In that case, we are using the linking verbs in which we are feeling something, uh, in which we are perceiving something, in which we are enjoying something, and we can add this adjective. Then, perceiving, seeing something, the sky is blue. And then enjoying something. I like Jumi food. Jumi food. Entonces, en este caso tenemos que también utilizamos los adjetivos cuando tenemos eh, linking verbs que expresan lo que nosotros estamos diciendo, lo que percibimos con los sentidos y o disfrutamos. So we have three examples that are talking about that situation. The first one, something that we feel. We feel good. Nos sentimos bien. Then, something that we perceive with, the, uh, with our senses. Estamos percibiendo algo con los sentidos. The sky is blue. We are seeing through our eyes. That is one of our main senses. Vemos que el cielo es azul. Because in that case, the blue or the colors are adjectives. And the last one, something that we enjoy. I like yummy food. Me gusta la comida deliciosa. Yummy is like, we can say delicious, amazing, good. In that case, we are enjoying the food. It says that if you can notice uh, the use of a D in this case, feel and like with sensory verbs you can almost always expect a uh, modifying adjective to follow similar linking verbs include taste smell sound look appear or 
seen. All of the things that we can perceive through uh, our body or our sense, um, we can use it with these adjectives. So it says placement and order of adjectives. When adjectives function together, the order depends on their function. In this case, we know that uh, we are going to use the adjective before the noun, but in that case, depending on the function that the word has, we are going to uh, word, uh, uh, place the adjective. But in this case, I think that I will uh, write this information in the document in which you are going to find it on Friday because we are talking about um, a lot of things about adjectives, but the important thing for this topic is the adverb. Así que les voy a escribir esta información de el placement, o sea, de cómo se va a escribir los adjetivos. Lo voy a poner debajo de esta información y ustedes lo van a encontrar cuando les mande el enlace de la información. Porque aquí nos está escribiendo dónde vamos a eh, poner los adjetivos dependiendo del uso que se les dé. Pero como necesitamos más que todos los adverbios, los adverbs, so, you are going to have a more information because we have type of adjective, placement, and all of that thing. So we are going to continue and we are going to see the adverbs. That is the main part. So what is an adverb? That is our question. What is an adverb? Or oh, what are adverbs? We're going to change because we're going to write it in plural. What are adverbs? So we have the answer for that question and it says, Adverbs are descriptive words that modify verbs, adjectives, phrases, and other adverbs by expressing time, location, frequency, degree, manner, and more. So adverbs are descriptive words that modify Verb, adjective, basis, and other adverbs. Time, location, frequency, degree. Manner and more. And we have two main adjectives for the adverb. We have number one, and it says, To answer why, when, where, and how. Where and how by expressing Time, location, degree, and more. And number two, to introduce or connect sentencing clauses. So in this case, we have two main objectives for the adverbs. And the first one is to answer some, some kind of questions, uh, to give uh, more information, and also to introduce or connect, to make a connection between sentences. 
or process are two um, two different sentences that uh, separate have meaning, but together it has a specific meaning. What are the types of adverbs that we have? We have the first one that adverbs of time. And these ones uh, denote the time of action through its fact or relative term. In this case, we are going to talk about time in which uh, we are doing something. Um, we are going to write the words that we are going to use for this kind of, uh, of, of expressions of time in this case. So we are going to write some list in which we are going to have all the average. Vamos a ir escribiendo pequeñas listas de palabras o de adverbs que vayan con cada uno de los tipos para que nosotros vayamos viendo en qué partes vamos a ir utilizando estos adverbs. So, in this case, we have uh, the specific time in which we are going to do something and what is the relative time for those uh, things that we are going to do. So, we are going to insert a table in which we are going to have the two types. We have the first one that is the specific time. And in the other one is relative time. So in the specific time we have now in this moment, then tomorrow, tonight, today and yesterday. So that is the specific time in which we can do some action. So what are the relative times that we can use for these adverbs of time? We have already before, earlier, Yearly, eventually, finally, first, formally, just, oh, there, okay, just, last, late, later, next, previously, recently, since, soon, still, and yet. So, I'm going to like this, because I need to have all the, yeah, the list. So in this case, we have the words that we can use in this part of the adverbs of time. Because in the case, we are going to answer some question about the time. So we have a specific time that we know that there are so many words with no um, a really long list. But in the relative time, we can use those words. Um, para los adverbios de tiempo, cuando estamos hablando de tiempo, ahí tenemos muchas de esas palabras que podemos utilizar para responder esas preguntas acerca del tiempo. No solo el, el tiempo específico, sino que también de relative time. And we can use it in our sentences. 
um, in that case that are um, denoting the exact time of the action or an relative term for this action. Then we have another one. And don't worry, we are just writing right now the list. You will have all this information um, in your devices. No se preocupen por la información, ustedes la van a tener siempre. Eh, van a tener siempre el acceso a esta información o las listas que estamos escribiendo de los adverbs. Así que no se preocupen por eso. Then we have adverbs of location. That is another one. And uh, in this case, we are talking about adverbs of place. Teacher, tell me. Una pregunta. Tell me. Estamos hablando de tiempo relativo o el tiempo. Oh, no, no logro verlo. Este. Ajá. Es, eh, cuando utilizamos usually eh, en cuál entra en el relativo o en el tiempo in this case you can use it in a relative time ok thank you you're welcome la cosa con esto es que tenemos eh, for the specific time es como algo bastante específico for example, I'm talking about something that I am doing right now in this precise moment. So I I have just one uh, word to talk about that time, a specific time. But it's something general we can say. But for the relative time, we can uh, have um, more than one word that we can use. Let's Eh, las palabras para el tiempo específico pueden ser como usos generales donde no vamos a dar como más detalles, sino una palabra que lo encierre todo, por ejemplo but in the relative time we can have varias opciones que podemos utilizar so in that case uh, for that reason we have just like three or four words in the specific time, but in the relative time you know that we have a lot of words in that case that you can use to talk about that moment. For example, um, late or later that are different, but in that case, it's depending on the same word. But they are relative because we have a, a, um, some moment in which we can use those words. So now, it says adverb of place or adverb of location describe where an action took place. So in that case, we are talking about a, the place in which we are performing something. So we have here some examples. Adverbs like here or there denote the location of something relative to the author. Adverbs like here or there. Denote the location of something Relative to the author. Something that is near to me. For example, I have here my lamp here in my space. Um, so in that case, it's something that we have in our space. That is something that is like really near to us. Adverbs like anywhere, everywhere, nowhere describe the position of activity uh, without mentioning the location. So I mean, in some cases when we are talking, we are not going to give all the information about something. Um, in that case, we are going to see or, or say something 
that has a little bit of information, but not the whole thing. So we can use words like anywhere, everywhere, or nowhere to describe the position of activity. without mentioning the location. So in this one, eh, anywhere, everywhere, nowhere, lo vamos a utilizar cuando vamos a hablar de la posición de una actividad, pero no queremos mencionar exactamente el lugar donde se está llevando a cabo. Ah, ¿cómo podemos decir en español? Por ahí. Where? We don't know. No sabemos dónde. Por ahí en algún lugar. Entonces, esos adverbs nos van a servir para eso, para eso. Eh, hablar de la acción. Ah, um, there is pollution everywhere. Hay contaminación por todos lados. ¿Dónde es por todos lados? Por todos lados. Puede ser muchos lugares, puede ser pocos lugares, pero no estamos especificando dónde. So, in that case, we are going to use the those words to describe uh, the position of, of activity, but we are not going to talk about the specific place in which that situation is taking place. So, um, we are going to have something with this uh, course. Uh, we are going to begin five minutes um, before the hour, because I have another group, so we are going to end five minutes eh, earlier. Vamos a comenzar cinco minutos antes de las sesiones, para los que pueden estar los cinco minutos antes, para los que no, no hay ningún problema, vamos a estar eh, siempre desarrollando la, la clase normal, eh, y vamos a estar terminando cinco minutos antes. Hoy lo vamos a terminar más o menos a esta hora, pero mañana vamos a tratar de terminar los cinco minutos antes, because I have another group eh, in a couple of minutes. Eh, so, we are going to end the first session. If you have questions or something like this, tomorrow you can ask those questions about the topic that we are developing right now. Um, I will give you time to ask your question about the adverb. And also we are going to end this, um, this topic tomorrow. So it was a pleasure to be here with you right now. So we are going to see each other tomorrow and have a really good night. Thank you. Good night. Take care. Good night. Bye bye. Thank you, teacher. Bye bye. 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 Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night.